What's up guys? I have a confession to make. I internet a lot, at least for a common user. How much is a lot? Well, my data traffic for the last month was a little under four terabytes, but I've seen months with literally double that in the past. Anyways, that means that my network is pretty much always sending and receiving data. So what's my internet speed? And what speed am I supposed to be stealing? I mean, paying for. Oh, you think that's good? I'm supposed to have 1.5 gig down and gigabit up. There's a problem here. And this, right here, might fix it. Let's get into it on your boot sequence. Why do I always put the things upside down? Okay, let's start with my network. He pays, I mean, I pay for a SageCom modem slash router combo. This model is fine, but from my location where I'm actually getting the internet, the speed is a little limited, or at least it's limited compared to the 1.5 gig down that's being paid for. Back when the service was a little bit slower at about 300 megabits per second, I could do with the slower speeds, but when I upgraded to 500 megabits per second, I needed something faster. So I bought a Deco M5 mesh network, something like this, and I installed it with permission while doing routine maintenance. This was definitely faster once again, but now the connection is 1.5 gigabit and I'm getting nowhere near that. That's where Wi-Fi 6E comes in and this Dynalink Axe 10 200 mesh network. This was sent over by the company to test out and of course, fix my issue. So what is Wi-Fi 6E and what's the difference between 6 and 6E? Well, the difference is actually pretty simple. Unlike Wi-Fi 6, which just covers the 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz frequency spectrums, 6E adds an entire frequency spectrum, which is six gigahertz. We'll get back to why that's really cool for this thing specifically and for me in a couple of minutes. So yeah, this thing is Wi-Fi 6E capable with a channel width of 160 megahertz and in total, so that's completely maxed out on all of the channels, 2.4 gigahertz to six gigahertz, it supports up to 10.2 two gigabits per second of traffic. I mean, the chip that handled this, I think is a Qualcomm one. Um, I think it's a Maple one gigahertz dual core chip. This specific model has high security standards with WPA3, the most up-to-date encryption protocol, at least until, you know, Skynet arrives. And it even has its own internet of things and guest network. That's neat when you have, well, I've got a lot of devices connected to this network at all times. Good thing it supports up to 200 devices. Ooh, I wonder about the range. Let me test that real quick. Well, they say 6,000 square feet and I'm all the way here and still connected. Okay, let's get back to the cool stuff. I said that the six gigahertz band was great for me. Well, that's because it uses it to communicate between each unit. Let me take it out of the box. Okay, so the six gigahertz band is used to connect between devices. That's called a six gigahertz backhaul. There's two reasons why this is good. First, six gigahertz is way faster, literally double the speed of the five gigahertz network at two gigabits per second, according to Intel. Secondly, six gigahertz is a new and uncluttered band. I highly doubt I'll have any interference issues with it in the future, meaning my PC, which will be connected via ethernet to this puppy, will have a clean six gigahertz road free of traffic to my neighbor's modem to my modem oh and it has two gigabit ethernet ports on each pods so you can have two pcs going full speed of course it supports devices compatible with the 6 gigahertz band too if you have any a lot of new phones and for some reason a motorola edge from 2021 supports 6 gigahertz technology on uh, the wi-fi for me the backhaul is the nice part i don't really have a uh, 6 gigahertz phone i currently still rock a one plus a so I won't be taking advantage of the six gigahertz band yet. Now, they asked me to talk about this specifically and with all of my friends sprouting kids like Brussels, I'll do it. It has uh, profile-based parental controls and this is what it looks like. The parental controls are actually pretty nice. You can even add it to your own phone. I'll call this one Snows for me. 
uh, and I'll choose this device. Currently, it's the only one connected, which is my phone. And once you're in the profile, you can do things like add more devices to this specific profile, or you can go ahead and give it priority, schedule pauses, or restrict content. It's a fairly extensive parental control system. This will support up to 16 profiles, which in them can have eight devices each. So unless you got 16 kids, that's uh, pretty good. And while we're in the app, I just wanted to show you how to do a firmware upgrade. So you would go to the menu, then settings, and then firmware update. That's very important to check up on because their early firmwares did have some issues that killed some of the devices themselves. So by upgrading, you're preventing that from happening. Although they do have a 12 month guarantee, which will cover these kinds of problems. Okay, let's get back to my problem. My neighbor's speed is 1.5 gigabits per second. And yes, I'm illegally tapping into it. I I admit it, I tap into my neighbors downstairs. Sue me, actually don't. I do it with their authorization, of course, as long as I fix their tech stuff. I mean, I'm not paying a hundred bucks a month for internet. But anyways, does that thing fix my problem, my internet speed? So I tested it at home and of course it's gonna hit the gigabit speeds. There's not much interference uh, where I live, but here where I'm testing it again at the office, there is a ton. There's other tenants with their own Wi-Fi networks. There's of course our super strong Wi-Fi network. And basically I wanted to test it in the worst case scenario. So let's go ahead and try it out. This is on Wi-Fi with the uh, laptop right now. Damn, that is really good. 720 ping is fine, but the speed is really high. And this is using the six gigahertz backhaul between pods. Okay, seven, oh, still. It could probably, damn, we're almost at the gigabit. Yeah, at the office, we're also limited to gigabit internet. <laughs> Plus the ports on the uh, pods themselves is limited to one gigabit. So there are limitations here and there. So yeah, there you have it. This definitely fixes some issues that I had with my old Deco 5. And this lasted me a couple of years. Hopefully this one will last me even longer. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Okay, I gotta, I gotta see this.